Well, good morning. How are you there this beautiful Monday morning? And I hope you are settled in, maybe got a nice cup of tea, and you're ready to do a little bit of digital learning. My name's Christine, and I will be your Google Digital Garage Coach for the morning. So, what do you need to know? A little bit about me first, maybe. So, as I say, I'm Christine, and I'm one of the trainers here on Google's Digital Skills Programme, the Google Digital Garage. I have been a marketeer since before digital was really a thing. And in that time in my career, I've been lucky enough to kind of learn as I go, I guess, as all these wonderful new techniques have come um, on board to help businesses connect with their customers. And that's what marketing is really all about. Um, so I've been part of Google's Digital Garage since 2015, and I am delighted to be joined this morning by our wonderful moderator, Rashane. Now, Rashane is in the chat right now. Um, you can tell you speaking to the moderator that she's the one in charge because she's got a little blue spanner next to her name. Um, Rashane's in there. As I say, she's also a Google Digital Garage coach. She's going to be there answering your questions. She will be giving you some links, providing you with some useful tips as we go through, um, and basically just keeping everything running as it needs to be. Um, we've got to pause for questions as we go through the session, so please do take the chance to get both of us working for you and for your business um, by getting those questions in to the team. So, um, bit of housekeeping, any trouble viewing the webinar, best thing to do is just try refreshing it. A little bit of turning it off and turning it on again turns to help. If you want to join in that instant chat and ask those questions, um, and I'm going to maybe ask you some questions, so it'd be great to get your uh, answers back as well. You're going to need to be signed into a YouTube account. So if you're not browsing signed in already, pop up to the little box on the right up there and sign up or sign in. Take your 10 seconds, I'm sure. By the time you've done that, come on back. We'll have finished the intros and we will be ready to get moving. Um, this webinar will be held as live on, um, as we work. So we're running through it live now so you can get those questions asked and answered. We're then going to keep it um, up on our channel. Um, until about lunchtime tomorrow. So you've got just over 24 hours uh, to review, to recap, to rewatch any of those sessions, any of those sections you want to. I find the best thing to do is as we're going through, when you think, aha, that's what I need to do, I want to remember and go back and rewatch it. Just jot down the time code on the video. That will help you to find the right place when you come to review. And all you need to do to get back here is to click on the link that you use to get here in the first place this morning. Um, so you do know we're running this Google Digital Garage virtual training as part of our broader offering of courses. So if you want to check out our schedule of upcoming webinar training, um, see the information that it's in the description box below and it'll link you through to our main website. I've probably forgotten something, but whatever it is, we'll bring you up to speed as we go. If you need the captions, then they are, should be available to you with the CC box down there. Um, any other problems, any issues, you just let Rashane know as we go through. So those of you who've done a Google Digital Garage webinar before will realise that we tend to sp spread our break our sessions down into three distinct areas. So we're going to start today by looking at how customers will find your business. So we're going to leave us for a moment and pop ourselves into the shoes of our customers, which is a really important exercise to do as regularly as you can, really. Um, then we're going to look at some of the ways that small businesses, just like yours, can go about building up their presence and getting themselves found on Google search and also on Google Maps. And then finally, we'll look at some ways that you can really make start to make uh, your visibility, your business's visibility shine on Google. So we've got some great tips for all of that as we go through. So hopefully there'll be something there for everyone. Now, I know we normally have a very international audience uh, for these sessions, which is amazing and welcome to you wherever in the world you are. Um, if you're here based in the UK, though, and you're working for a small business or for a charity, um, then I wanted to take this opportunity to invite you and 
um, indeed encourage you to sign up for a free one-to-one -one mentoring session from Google. As I say, these sessions are completely free. And what you do is the chance to work one-to-one -one with one of our Google Digital Garage mentors um, on a range of digital skills, really. It might be building out your strategy. It might be when you some of the things you learn today, really taking that on to the next step and, and making that presence shine, getting yourself found um, in the search and maps. Um, it might be helping yourself out, helping you to find customers or working out how to get to grips with social media, whatever your digital um, business skills needs. You can sign up and book a session at g.co forward slash UK mentoring. And we would love to see you there as well. But back to what we're talking about today. Imagine the scene. You're a person going about their daily lives, and you want to find a new business to meet whatever needs you have. Maybe it's the windows need cleaning, or you want to go find somewhere to go and escape from the wonderful heat wave that we're having here in the UK. Three out of four online customers will take out their phone or maybe boot up their computers and search um, for a business using a search engine, such as Google. Other search engines are available. And more than that, thinking about that human behavior, 82% of smartphone users report that they routinely conduct local mobile searches. So those are searches for a cafe near me, ice cream parlor in Hemel Hempstead. So this idea of understanding I'm out and about, I've got my mobile phone, it knows where I am, it's going to take me to the nearest best um, place or direct me to those businesses in the local area that um, might be able to suit my needs. So real customers of real human beings are behaving like that, okay? So imagine, let's put yourself in the shoes of your customer. Now you can do this with, um, our example business of if you wanted to find a pizza, okay? But also you can think about doing this with your business, with people who are looking for a business or service like yours. If you were to take out your phone, as I say, 82% of people using, these, using their smartphones to conduct quick searches. If I'm not sitting at home on my computer ready to work, then I'm unlikely to actually use, boot up my computer just to do a search. I'll do a quick search using the device I have to hand. So imagine, and as I say, you can um, you can do this along with me, this exercise along with me, or you can start to think about your kind of business. How do people search for what they need? The term we've put on screen is pizza near me. In fact, try pizza near me. What comes up? What is going to help you to solve the problem. Because all searching really is that somebody has a, there's a stimulus, somebody has an idea, somebody has a problem, and they're going about looking for a way to solve it. So do the search that's relevant to you and mentally choose one of the options. And think about the factors that are helping you to choose that local business, that business close to you that comes up on your phone. You don't need to click through to it. Just hang fire on that page and have a think. Okay, so I want to break this down into a process because search behavior is very much process driven. All right. So here's a first question for you. What um, service did you use? Did you open up um, a search engine? Did you use your mobile device? Were you already working on thing, pop it in the chat, let Rochelle know how you go about searching, whether it was for that pizza or for that item, um, you know, that was relevant to you. And when you're looking at those search results, when you're trying to make a decision, what are the factors that help you decide? As I say, pop the factors, what things are you looking for as a human customer, making a decision, what are you looking for when you decide? So we've got kids who said they're using Google on their phone. Brilliant. Is it the maps you're using or are you going straight into the 
um, are you using the Maps app? Are you opening up Search? Are you, uh, is there another way? So think about what you're doing. And the reason for doing this is as much as anything, because I want you to become a student of search. When you're looking at human behavior, that's your human behavior, do you look at star ratings? Do you look at reviews? Do you look at, um, what else might you look at? The photos. What are those sources of information that are helping you to make those decisions? Okay. So, as I say, this is a process. Now, there's something that we say the process kicks off with making a search. Actually, there's a step that happens just before. So kind of here, off the page a little bit, the search journey starts with a stimulus. With pizza, it might be that somebody feels hungry and they don't really feel like cooking tonight. Um, with if you sell washing machine parts, it might be that the washing machine breaks. Something goes on in the lives of your customer, your potential customer. Um, and, you know, something happens in their life, makes them pick up their phone and make that search. OK, then they make the search itself. They look at the factors that present back to them on that first page and make their decision. And then they decide which of the businesses they want to engage with, which they need to have more questions about, whether they're going to see how close it is, what products they have, what services they offer, maybe how much things cost. And the, all of these areas, you can't control what happens in the person's life that means they start searching. But from the time the search is made, the more you can understand what has happened here, and what's going on in the life around them, better you can make yourself findable, okay? So we're looking for personalized results. That's why people search in the Google search app, they search in Google Maps, you know, they want to know what's close to them, what's open now, what's available to them. So search is super important um, because unless you, um, are able to uh, be found, then people aren't going to be able to find you. If you're not listed in the search engines, then you're not going to be findable. Okie dokie. So there's lots of interesting stuff about how search actually works. Um, what I'm just going to have to do, oh, give us a sec, is I'm going to try and play you this video. Now, this doesn't always work. Um, so what I'm going to do is just very quickly uh, do it this way. And let's see if I can make it work. Give me two seconds. Right. Let's get through to the right place. Whoops. Where are we? Here. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that this is going to make the um, video play. Eek. Doesn't seem to be. Let's have a look. Give us two seconds. No, that's not going to work. All right, give me two seconds. We're just having slight technical difficulties here. Uh -huh. We'll try it this way and I'll just turn up a little bit. Every day, billions of people come here with questions about all kinds of things. Sometimes we even get questions about Google search itself, like how this whole thing actually works. And while this is a subject entire books have been written about, there's a good chance you're in the market for something a little more concise. So let's say it's getting close to dinner and you want a recipe for lasagna. You've probably seen this before, but let's go a little deeper. Since the beginning, back when the homepage looked like this, Google has been continuously mapping the web, hundreds of billions of pages, to create something called an index. Think of it as the giant library we look through whenever you do a search for lasagna or anything else. Now, the word lasagna shows up a lot on the web. Pages about the history of lasagna, articles by scientists whose last name happened to be lasagna, stuff other people might be looking for. But if you're hungry, randomly clicking through millions of links is no fun. This is where Google's ranking algorithms come into play. 
First, they try to understand what you're looking for, so they can be helpful even if you don't know exactly the right words to use or if your spelling is a little off. Then they sift through millions of possible matches in the index and automatically assemble a page that tries to put the most relevant information up top for you to choose from. Okay, now we have some results. But how did the algorithms actually decide what made it onto the first page? There are hundreds of factors that go into ranking search results, so let's talk about a few of them. You may already know that pages containing the words you search for are more likely to end up at the top. No surprise there. But the location of those words, like in the page's title or in an image's caption, those are factors too. There's a lot more to ranking than just words. Back when Google got started, we looked at how pages linked to each other to better understand what pages were about and how important and trustworthy they seemed. Today, linking is still an important factor. Another factor is location where a search happens. Because if you happen to be in Ormea, Italy, you might be looking for information about their annual lasagna festival. But if you're in Omaha, Nebraska, you probably aren't. When a web page is uploaded is an important factor too. Pages published more recently often have more accurate information, especially in the case of a rapidly developing news story. Of course, not every site on the web is trying to be helpful. Just like with robocalls on your phone or spam in your email, there are a lot of sites that only exist to scam, and every day scammers upload millions more of them. So just because instantvirusdownload.net lists the words lasagna recipe 400 times, that doesn't mean it's going to help you make dinner. We spend a lot of time trying to stay one step ahead of tricks like these, making sure our algorithms can recognize scam sites and flag them before they make it to your search results page. So let's review. Billions of times a day, whenever someone searches for lasagna, or resume writing tips, or how to swaddle a baby, or anything else, Google software locates all the potentially relevant results on the web, removes all the spam, and ranks them based on hundreds of factors like keywords, links, location, and freshness. Okay, good time to take a breath. This last part is about how we make changes to search, and it's important. Since 1998, when Google went online, people seem to have found our results pretty helpful. But the web is always changing, and people are always searching for new things. In fact, one in every seven searches is for something that's never been typed into the search box before, by anyone, ever. So we're always working on updates to search, thousands every year. Which brings up a big question. How do we decide whether a change is making search more helpful? Well. One of the ways we evaluate potential updates to search is by asking people like you. Every day, thousands of search quality raters look at samples of search results side by side, then give feedback about the relevance and reliability of the information. To make sure those evaluations are consistent, the raters follow a list of search quality evaluator guidelines. Think of them as our publicly available guide to what makes a good result good. Oh, and one last thing to remember. We use responses from raters to evaluate changes, but they don't directly impact how search results are ranked. So there you have it. Every time you click search, our algorithms are analyzing the meaning of the words in your search, matching them to the content on the web, understanding what content is most likely to be helpful and reliable, and then automatically putting it all together in a neatly organized page designed to get you the info you need. All in, oh, 0.81 seconds? Wow. Anyone else ready for dinner? Interested in learning more? We've got a whole website dedicated to how search works. Just click right here. Want to read the search quality radar guidelines for yourself? Click right here. Okay, so apparently that did come through with the sound, which is brilliant. We must be having a good day. So we know um, how that works, how search works. As I say, if you want to know a bit more in depth technical details, then do feel free to either watch, re watch that video or go and check it out a bit more online. If you're going to do that and do reading around it online, always go for a good source. There are loads of people saying, oh, if you try this trick, it's going to get you up the search engine. And most of those tricks, I've seen websites come and go over the last 15 years or so. And the ones that have well managed, well ordered, well tagged, interesting pages are the ones that stick around. The ones that try all the latest tricks, they might succeed for a little while, but they don't um, have that long lasting impact. So do the good things well. 
Okay, so we're back to that little bit just before the search actually happens. How do you know whether somebody is searching for a product or a service like yours? Now, for most businesses, the answer is, well, they probably are, which is fantastic. But how do you know that? How do you get information? and to see how best to use it. I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools. Now, I could happily spend, well, I have happily spent whole hours talking about this particular tool. This particular tool is called Google Trends. Now, since um, I think it's about 2004, somebody somewhere at Google decided, wouldn't it be interesting if we could see what was being searched for, as in if we could serve it up as a kind of record of what's interesting at a particular moment in time. And a searchable database of search called Google Trends was born. So this tool pulls together data on searches that are made through Google. Okay. But remember what we were saying about human behavior. We think of something, we grab a device and we search for it. So it absolutely is an up to the minute idea of what's being thought about. Um, really interesting things to try. Uh, you can jump on, you pop in a search term. And then it shows you over a time period for a particular location, over a particular time period, the searches that were made. If you want to see how this works, go and put takeaway and put recipe and see how those two um, terms, those two search terms interplay. You can see that, and I'll tell you now for probably most locations, I've done it on the UK, over a long period of time, more people are searching for recipes than are searching for takeaways. But if you make that past five years, say the past week, and look at what happens at around six, seven, eight o'clock on a Thursday, Friday and Saturday night and see how human behavior says all the people who've already do, who've, who are going to be organized enough to cook have done their recipes and see what happens to that recipe versus takeaway line. It's fascinating because you can see real human behavior in the data. So what about a business like yours? Well, here we have a plumbers near me. Now, nobody was looking for plumbers near them before about 2015. Okay, this um, the, the graphs in uh, Google Trends are relative to themselves. So plumbers near me, 100 on this line is the maximum number of searches, the maximum times that that was searched. Zero and bubbling along the bottom means that people weren't really searching it. Plumbers near me really started to take off and we can see it's gone up and up and up but what i can say from the shape of this graph is people aren't consistently searching for plumbers near them there's a couple of times a year when people search for plumbers near them okay so think about what does that mean in human behavior terms i can tell you because i've looked at this and you can go off and have a look and see um here we go, we've got two peaks a year. One of them is around about the autumn. And what happens in the autumn? The temperatures start to drop, people pop on their heating and they realize, well, the heating's been off for a while and actually it needs fixing. Who do we, what do we do? We look for a plumber near me who can come and fix it. That little peak dies off, all the plumbers are nice and busy, gets to Christmas, gets into the new year, and there is a cold snap. There's always a cold snap every single winter. And what happens? Well, the second peak is when pipes, well, it's not actually when the cold snap happens, it's when the thaw happens, all right? And that the snap, it means that pipes burst, people need a plumber, they need one near them, and they need them right now. So you can see human behavior in the data. I'm going to have to leave that there because if I do go and talk about this so much, but what I would strongly su suggest is head to google.com forward slash trends and start seeing 
what people are searching for that is around your business. You can put two terms against each other and see which they're searching for more. It's a really interesting, really useful place to dip your head into the world of your customers. All right, I can see we've got tons of questions coming in, which is amazing. Um, I can see that quite a lot, we've got some uh, crystals asking quite a bit of question all about search marketing and ads. That's not what we're gonna talk about today. I really recommend, Crystal, that you head over to our, it's called Get Starting, Get Started with Digital Advertising. Um, and that's going to be uh, a great webinar for you that goes into the ads. We're not going to cover ads particularly today, okay? But do keep getting those questions on. And if they're on the um, if they're on the topic that we're talking about today, we'll be able to go into a bit more detail. If not, we'll be able to signpost you off for somewhere else to get help. But let's have a look at Google Maps. And we are going to see some ads here. So some of those that you're talking about, Crystal um is is what's going on so we're looking again at human behavior and most search engines basically work in the same way somebody somewhere types in a question or a query and i like to think of search about as questions human beings search by questioning how do i find where's the nearest i'm bored what can i do you know we think about that questioning behavior so when you're thinking about your search work getting fat yourself found in search think about being a great answer to the queries because the answers are what appear below got different kinds of answers we've got ads here that we're not really going to touch on today we've got our organic search results those these are these are the ones um they're not clear an ad is clearly worked marked by the word ad or by the word sponsored we're looking at organic a lot today how to get yourself found um, naturally without paying i won't say it's free because your time and your effort and your work is all going to have a particular cost to it and then we've got this the knowledge panel on the right hand side where you might be able to create yourself a business listing to get found for that particular search query okay so we're thinking there's basically three areas of search you can get found it could be found in the organic search which as i say that's the work to get your website visible you could have a business listing, which is a tool we're going to come on to speak about, where you tell the world's biggest search engine all about your business. And then hopefully you will be matched to when local people are looking for the kinds of products or services that you offer. And then there's paid search, as I say, which we'll touch on, but not really cover. But search engine optimization. That is the practice of, increase, of increasing the quantity and quality of traffic to your website. So to do search engine optimization, a couple of important things. One, you have to have a website. If you want to do search engine optimization and get yourselves in those 10 natural or organic listings, then you're going to have to have a website to send um, people to. And you're going to have to do some work on that website to show, to prove that you're a great answer. And that was all the stuff that was going on in that video we watched. And the other thing to be really, really aware of is search engine optimization is a practice. It's not a task. It's not something we do once and then forget about. This is about keeping yourself up to date, keeping yourself relevant and, and, and actively working on getting yourself um, and proving that you're a great answer. All right. So showing on your website that you're a fantastic answer to the questions that are being asked, which is why it's so important to understand the kinds of questions that people might have about a business like yours. So in order to do or to get started with search engine optimization, entire books have been written about this and, and will continue to be so. The most important thing to realize is that there aren't any shortcuts. There isn't a magic bit of fairy dust you can sprinkle to get yourself found well in uh, the, the results. You have to understand what the customers are looking for. So keyword research. The keywords are the words and phrases that people tippity tap into that search engine to find a product or service, a business like yours. So um, how do I fix my washing machine? 
or my help my washing machine's broken might be the kinds of things. So the keyword research is about putting yourself into the mind of that customer and thinking about all the questions they have that you're a great answer to. Then you have to prove you're a great answer. And you do that by being interesting. So good quality content, whether that's videos, content could be blogs, content where you put words around. Um, the search engines, currently at least, work around words. So if you put a video up, make sure you've got descriptions and captions and tags that will show what that video is about, which will prove that you're a great answer. And don't just do the, what you can't do is all try but what never seems to work is when people have really good descriptions that sound like they match but as we saw in the video unless that content is coming through well then actually it's not going to be um, seen as a good source so it's not going to get boosted up through those rankings. And then how do you go about making your web pages search friendly? OK, so think about um, those tags on the page. If you're using a CMS, then there might be a module that says, right, what am I going to title each page? What is each page about? And when you're saying what each page is about and you're writing your descriptions and you're tagging them up, make sure that what you're putting in those tags descriptions is and titles are relevant to the content on the page which is relevant to the person doing the searching okay so be really specific with your research about these are the questions people have about my business this is how I'm going to prove I'm a fantastic answer don't try and speed the process up people you know, at one point about five years ago, that people were putting white text on a white background. Those tricks are never, ever, even if they work short term, they do not work for very long. OK, so when you're thinking about you need now to compete to get found. Imagine you were selling trainers. Maybe you're a local shoe shop and you sell trainers. If somebody searches for trainers, in the search engine, unfortunately, they're very likely in the natural search listings to get all those big companies that sell trainers, that make trainers, that have huge advertising campaigns about trainers. The good news is that once people have done the research on those trainers, a lot of them don't even sell direct. And what a lot of people will want is a more local trainer shop that they can go to. So don't despair just because you don't have that huge marketing budget. What I really want you to do is focus on the kinds of people with the kinds of questions that are maybe we would call them long tail. So, you know, trainers, there are millions of searches done, but hundreds of thousands of people going for those keywords. Think in depth. When you search, most people search on three to five words. So when we talk about keywords, we're talking about phrases. So a short keyword like here, like trainers, might have a lot of competition on it and lots of people doing it. But then look at what we might sell in our shop. These could even be the same pair of shoes, but we're thinking about what the user will use them for. You can have a great pair of uh, trainers that work fantastically if you're on your feet all day, like a nurse might be. But they're also great if you've got flat feet or plantar fasciitis. By writing a blog about how this particular issue, don't try and do all four issues in once, um, try and do, you know, an article about flat feet and what flat feet means and talk about it and answer the questions because the question that that person might have is, what are the best running trainers for flat feet? And if you can show you're a fantastic answer, then that's how you're going to get yourself to stand up in the search, stand out in the search rather. Now, there are tools to help. OK, so I can see some of the questions coming through and these are going to be perfectly timed for you because Google Search Console, it's another free service from Google. That, and what you do is you just like you do, those of you who've come across your Google Analytics so far, in a very similar way to Google Analytics, you give, um, you sign up for the tool, you link it to your website and then you can see how Google sees your site. So what keywords does Google think 
that you're showing that you're great for? Where do you rank in the search engines for particular terms? And when you've had, you can see how many impressions people, how many times people saw you in the search results and how many times they clicked through. That goes into loads of depth about, you can start running experiments about, well, if I change the title and description, can I make it more appealing to people to click through to my website? Tons of work that can be done then. Um, you can see which websites link into your sites, because as we remembered, those spiders follow links on the web. You can see whether you're working well on mobile devices, so people on mobiles are boosted to come and see yours. Um, and really importantly, you can also, if you make some changes, you can also submit your web page to the index to be recrawled. So you make, you do the research, you decide what you're going to do, you publish a new article, you put in a site map so that your site can be understood. And then you send that all back to be recrawled and re-indexed, which there again is going to help your changes be noticed a lot sooner than if you just wait for those spiders to come and find you. OK, so if you want to join it, head to g.co forward slash search console. This is a tool that only works if you have a website and you have to have ownership of the website because there's some amazing information on there. Um, so jump on there, see how Google's seeing your site, and then start to practice making it better. If you join any of our digital marketing strategy webinars, we'll be talking about, you know, test it, try it. Try it, test it, measure it. If it works, do more of it. If it doesn't, do less. You know, you can do something else. So make sure you're measuring the results of any changes you make. What effect do those changes have? Rather than just a gut feel, you can actually get the numbers. And what's really great is if you link your search console to your data analytics, then those of you who have um, web analytics, Google Analytics on their website already, if you click into, and you can see that people have come in through Google search, if you link Google search console to your analytics, and it's all beautifully linked in the background, you can see not just that they came in through search, but what terms they use to get there, which you can do through your search console, but impressively, what actions those people then took. Join us for Google app for our webinar on um, analytics if you want to learn more, okay? So let's talk now a little bit about local search engine optimization. This is where local businesses, businesses that serve a local community can really get themselves boosted. I saw there was a question earlier on about somebody who ships internationally and doesn't have a physical presence. The Google um, tool I'm about to talk about was de developed to help f businesses that actually serve a geographical community. It doesn't mean you can't use it to help you get yourself found, but the the beauty of this tool is specifically designed for local businesses to help themselves be found in search and in maps. Now, can't underestimate the power of the mobile here. This is where people are doing the near me's. This is where people are, I'm doing some research. I'm off to Italy in a few weeks and I want to do research and see what's going to be near me on the day. How long will it take to go on the train from Naples to Sorrento? You know, all of that great information. What cafes will be close to the station when I get there? All of that great information has a local intent. And that's what this tool is all about. So whether it's appearing in Google search and getting your star ratings and your photos, or whether it's getting your pin on Google Maps, you can use this tool even if you do not want the pin, okay? So lots of businesses have a physical premises. I want to bring you into my cafe. I want you to be able to find out where my hardware store is. But also some of them, maybe I'm a plumber or a business consultant and I work from my own address. And I don't want people as a plumber knocking on the door and bringing me their U-Bend to fix, okay? So um, best thing to do is if you have a local intent, 
get yourself set up with this particular tool, all right? So, oh, it still says here, Google My Business for Shame. We must get that one changed because they've actually changed the name. You might have heard of Google My Business, but it's actually now called the Google Business Profile, okay? Um, and basically, the experience is that you sign up for a Google Business Profile, it may already know about your business. I could go into a long description of how this tool arrived and why that's the case. But basically, sometimes if your business is well established, well linked on lots of directories, Google may already know that you exist. If it doesn't, then you just create your business, add it in there. You pop in some information about yourself, where you are, what you do, your products, your services, and then you verify. And the verification is super important because Google only wants businesses on there that actually exist. And it only wants control of the business listings to be there for the people who own them. We're going to talk loads more about the profile as we go through. But the really important thing, so head to google.com forward slash business, is to show that you are active. OK, um, Google and human beings doing a search don't know whether the information that you put in six months ago a year ago is still correct or whether you've just gone away and don't do those things anymore nobody's updated the profile is it because everything's correct or is it because nobody's bothered so in order to have a really good boost i would suggest that you're making sure you um, update things fairly regularly maybe once a month it's not like social media where you have to be on there every day but making sure that you may be um, adding a bit of information or making sure everything's right at least once a month as part of your general discipline. Showing people that you're active is really going to help them learn more about your business. OK. Now, I promised we'd um, touch on it very quickly because it is there in the search engine results. But search engine marketing is where you use paid advertising to ensure that a business's products or services are visible in the search engine results pages. And this is a whole other topic. So what we do is we take a look at this in a lot more detail in our getting started with digital advertising, I think, as I've already recommended to Crystal. Um, so. To get into those search engine results pages, you can appear as an ad. They'll always be clearly marked as ad or sponsored. There's text ads, there are shopping ads, there are video ads that you can get yourself into YouTube. There's all kinds of options when it does come to advertising. And I would say that if you're in a highly um, competitive field and you have a really good understanding of your customer and a really good understanding of the areas you can win. And then you have an amazing website to drive people to where you're measuring it and you can tell what effect your advertising has had. Then they are a great way to get a gain a boost, especially if you've got sales as a target. OK. However. I would always say do the stuff that, although it's a lot of work and a lot of learning, you're not paying for directly because the ads are still a lot of work. The ads still require a good understanding. OK, so to create a search ad, you sign up for Google Ads. Um, you go through the wizard and it'll help you to choose it. But basically, rather than with... Um, search optimization, you're kind of optimizing and hoping and saying this is what we would like to be found for. Ads is a lot more direct. You choose the words you want to have the potential to be found for. But then you have to write a compelling ad. And then again, here, it should still say you have to be a great answer to the question being asked. You can't buy your way into the Google Ads without being a great result, a great answer for those uh, people searching to find, which is why I always say do this optimizing first and then boost with ads once you're good at the optimization. All right, I can see we've got loads of questions coming in, which is amazing. Uh, let's have a look. So Kazaf, a long tail keywords better for smaller businesses? Normally, yes, because you probably serve a niche of customers. You're not serving every single customer ever in the world. There'll be something about the people who are most likely to buy from you. 
because smaller businesses tend to be more specialized. So you can speak directly to them, which means really understanding what they're, um, you know, talking about. All right. So, um, so yeah, a couple of questions on longer tail keywords really helps you. The more, the other thing is the, there's less competition on those longer tail keywords. So more words in the keyword, fewer people searching, but fewer people concentrating on your exact niche because there are thousands and millions of niches out there. The more you understand the language and the questions and the problems that your particular customers have, the better. I've got some question, a question great from Joe. Any tips for re running keyword research? Yes, there are tons of Google tools. There are lots of tools out there that promise to help you. A lot of the tools about running keyword research will kind of look at your website and tell you what your keywords are. When I'm doing keyword research, I want to flip that over. I want to understand what my customer is interested in and then optimize for those things. So Joe, keyword research, the best keyword research tool ever are these things, to your ears, listening to what real people say, talking to people, asking questions, looking at social media, um, reading reviews. If you read the reviews for businesses like yours, you can see the kinds of issues. They don't even have to be your customers, your reviews, you can see the kinds of issues that real people have. And then you can look to see, well, how am I a great answer to those? But they're giving away the keywords they use by the language that actually comes out of their mouths or out of their fingers. Um, and as I say, if you put Crystal there again, the same question really as before, if your business doesn't have a physical location, but sells worldwide, there's nothing to stop you creating a Google business profile and telling it genuinely about your business, you're not going to have, you know, um, it, 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 it can help. But what you're not going to get is the boost from the, the people who are local to you looking because you are trying to sell worldwide. Therefore, you're going to need to use ads and you're going to need to use great uh, social media and you're going to use great all those other things in your marketing mix. If you're unsure about what's in your marketing mix, join us for Get Started. Uh, no, it won't be called Get Started. We call Digital Marketing Strategy when we look at all of the different uh tools that you might want to bring into your toolkit. Just because this is a fantastic tool doesn't mean it's the right tool for every single situation. Oh, and just one from Joe. Search Console, did I say it was the same as Google Analytics or separate? They are separate tools. You sign up for them separately and they have different jobs. Search Console shows how you're doing in search. Google Analytics shows what traffic's doing no matter where it's come from. But a fantastic use of the two together is to send your search console data into your Google Analytics and it will show magically. I genuinely think it's some kind of magic. It brings that intelligence from the search console into your analytics. So you get to see it through an even stronger lens. All right. These questions are amazing. Do keep them coming. But I want to jump in and just give you some great tips for how to um, really boost your presence in search now. So. First things first, and I can't believe it's 2022 and I'm still having to tell people this, is just because your site is built on a computer, um, please, please, please don't forget how well it works on a mobile, especially if you've got that local intent. And this is your website now. If you have a website, make sure you've checked or had somebody check for you how it works on different mobile devices. Now, you could get loads of mobile devices and look at it, or you could do my much better lazy girls guide is to head to g.co forward slash test my site that's part of the grow with google um, suite of tools and what that does is it analyzes your site as to how well it will work on mobile and then it gives you some tips to improve your mobile performance mobiles phones don't like pages that are slow to lo load mobile phones don't like pages where you can't click easily through the forms especially if you've got fat little thumbs doing it so, but rather than you trying all those things, it's a great idea to try them to get an idea, but um, head over to test my site and that will show you how you can improve how well your website works on mobiles. Um, 
Mobile optimization is really important if anybody's going to look for you on mobile. You know, making sure that you work, your site runs well, that it loads quickly, that it behaves itself is going to help you get boosted up through the listings when people are searching on mobile. It will also help users to complete the actions you want them to complete once they get to your website. If it's worth driving people to your website, it's making worth making sure that they stick around and do what you wanted them to do. OK. So we're going to jump back now to talking a little bit about the Google business listing. So we left it at the point where you pop your details in and you verify your listing. OK, so when you verify your listing, it's a really important step, although you can put in a business. Um, if you're using lots of Google tools already, you're known in analytics and search console, then you might get an automatic verification. If not, you might get a postcard sent to your business address. OK, so this idea of verifying your business to make sure that you are who you say you are and where you say you are is super, super important. Now, once you've got that business listing, so we're back to, um, as I say, any business can have one, but it really works brilliantly for those with a local intent. All right. First of all, make sure your details are correct. Is the pin in the correct place if you're a business with a pin? Is your service area the right areas? You can look and see, well, which postcodes am I prepared to travel to? Whether... Um, I'm offering, I'm, I'm selling the services and products. Have I linked to my menu? Have I popped in photographs? Um, responding to reviews, you know, if somebody does review you, if it's a great review, thank them for the review. If it's not so great and not so great reviews happen, then you can use that as an opportunity to prove that that experience isn't what the experience that you strive to give. You can also, with a review, learn so much, as I say, those keywords. So really get involved in, if you're lucky enough to get reviews, if you're not getting any reviews, ask for some reviews, because those star ratings are what really helps other people to trust that this is a great business. And this is one, it's buried away in slide 30 something of one of the webinars, but add managers. Now, if you are the business owner, and I know a lot of business owners, they probably don't want to be doing this ongoing, right? What you might want to do is get somebody else to do it for you, which is brilliant, whether that's one of your staff or you bring an outside agency in to do it. Whichever tools you use, whether it's your website, whether it's your um, email addresses, whatever the tool is, as the business owner, make sure that you have overall control. And then you can add a manager to do the day to work, one of the staff, somebody at a, an agency, your friend's cousin who's going to help out because they're good at this sort of thing. Whoever it is, make them a manager, but you stay as the owner. That means when they move on, if they move on, you always retain control. You're not then having to go, oh, I don't know how to update it. I can't, I need to contact them and get that detail back. So whatever tool you're using, my one of actually my top tips for being a business owner in a digital age is you should retain control. Um, OK, so the other thing you might want to do is if you've built your business listing and you don't have a website yet, um, then the your Google business profile can be upgraded to a free website. All right. So although it's perfectly possible nowadays with Google business profile and social media, it's perfectly possible to run a good business without um, having your own website. If you want to give it a try, check out the um, it's good called Google Sites. But you can actually go. This is your menu. When you're doing your Google business listing, one of the menu options is a website. If you don't have your own website listed there, you can use this free templated web builder. It is not going to create a website that's going to win you all kinds of design awards. What it will help you do is create a simple web presence because lots of people look to double check. If I meet a business, I quite often go and double check whether they have a website. It's almost like a business card, a, a, a sign of legitimacy. 
Okay, so do feel free if you don't have a website already to give building your own website a go. All right. In terms of the business listing itself, um, opening hours, super important. OK, so if you're a business that drives people to come to your location, it's an incredibly frustrating experience for a customer if they turn up at a location and the business is closed. I've done it before where I've actually posted and it was the Royal Mail sorting office near me where I go to pick up my parcels, changes its opening hours seemingly on a whim and never, ever, ever publishes them. So I'll take a lunch break and schlep over to them for them not to be open. OK, um, when you so make sure you're website, uh, sorry, your Google business profile has those opening hours on it. And if you close half day because it's somebody's birthday or because, do you know what, today it's here in the UK, it's going to be really hot apparently. And we're not very good at heat. And some businesses, I know Chester Zoo, have said, right, we're going to be closed for two days because it's not fair to the animals, to the keepers, to the customers. They're worried about people fainting. You know, so actually... What they will have done, I am sure, and somebody can check it with, they'll have updated their opening hours to show that for these two days, they are temporarily closed. It's super easy to do, and you can manage those. If it's your profile and you're signed in, you can manage that actually in the Google search or, or either the Google search listings or in the Google Maps app. You don't even have to go off into any other tools. It's super, super, super easy to do. Adding photographs that attracts visitors, it shows people what's going on. Um, and how I would do it is rather than uploading 20 photographs at a time and then leaving it, get yourself in the, the discipline of adding a photograph every couple of weeks or a photograph a month. Set yourself a, a time where you review all these things, think like a customer, um, add some photographs, maybe add in a little bit of uh, some words that are going because you've been listening to a particular customer, you've done your keyword research and a customer has come up with a phrase that you had never really thought about. They've come up with a question that you didn't realize you were a good answer to. That person who had the shoes for nurses that were durable hadn't realized until they spoke to a customer that they were also very, really comfortable if you had that plantar fasciitis. So by listening to people, that's how you can start to expand. This isn't a task that gets done once. This is an ongoing practice. And keep looking at those reviews, replying to them, showing that you're a real person. If you're worried about re replying to reviews, you can join us for our webinar on writing for social media. Because in that webinar, we absolutely talk about how to express yourself in the fast paced world of social media, which some of these posts are going to be all about but also how to deal with complaints. And sometimes you might have that in your reviews. Just as you can with social media, you can use a post to tell people what's going on. There are event posts, there are special offer posts. Um, those updates will post directly to your business listing. And I would put yourself in the discipline there again of doing a post a month, maybe when you do your pictures, maybe when you're thinking about all of these things. You might be somebody who's really lucky and has lots of customer images that you can reshare. Maybe you have to be thinking up offers. If you're worrying about what to write, as I say, use the discipline in um, the writing for social media webinar and absolutely, um, you know, uh, learn how to make a post. But it's not like social media where you have to be posting all the time. Once a fortnight, once a month will be plenty to show that you are active. And finally, I've mentioned it already, but measurement is so super important. Join us for digital marketing strategy and one of us will tell you all about the kinds of things you can measure. Um, lots of things to measure within your uh, digital marketing, um, within the Google business profile itself. For instance, you can see whereabouts people who asked for directions were based, roughly. Is it kind of in a postcode area? Here, this is, am I being found in direct, which are the green portion of this chart, or discovery? So direct is somebody who knows my name, who looks for Christine's Cafe. 
discovery as somebody who looks for cafes near me and comes across my um, details. They are fantastic ways. So are people, is my listing great? So people are finding me with cafes or have I done great marketing? So they look for me and come directly for me. They're both really important. And you might want to decide, well, you want 50-50 or you want to improve both of them. Okay. And um, yeah, get make sure you get signed up, get your business. If you have, if you think that this either the pin on the map or the boost in the local area is the right thing for you, then we have a webinar called Find Customers with Google Maps. And that might be a great webinar for you to do next. And find it in the schedule. Come and join us for it. We'll go into even more detail about being found this way. OK, we're dot on time, but I can see that um, I've asked, should I use Test My Site when using AMP? Test My Site works for your own website. If you're using somebody else's website, then that's not the right tool for it. OK, so Test My Site is for your own website. Brilliant. Otherwise, next steps, pop in the chat. Is there something you're going to do differently from today? Pop into the chat, let Rochelle know. And um, it's a great way of, of, of telling the universe and making that commitment to get to, to make a difference, to make a change. It's also great that we can know how we're affecting people, what change is happening. If it is that you're based in the UK and you would like to join us for an hour of one-to-one -one mentoring if you're a small business or you're working for a charity sign up at g.co forward slash uk mentoring otherwise thank you so much for your questions it's been super busy which is amazing we love it when there are tons of questions i got to wrap up here as we're completely out of time so feedback link if you want to give our team any feedback if you want to Shout from the rafters about uh, your learning here today. We're on hashtag digital garage for social media. You can follow that as well to see what else is coming up. We've got mm, tons more Google Digital Garage webinars on different subjects. Check out the website in the description below. That'll take you through to us. Otherwise, thank you to you for joining us, to Rashane for being our amazing moderator. Um, I've been Christine and I hope you've enjoyed our time together as much as I have. Have a lovely day.